What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Some of you may or may not know the writer and director, a huge horror fan favorite, Stuart Gordon, has passed at the age of 72. And it has been a rough couple of weeks already, adding this news on such a, a great legend in the horror community especially is rough. I wanted to honor his decades of talent and passion by picking my top five favorite Stuart Gordon directed films. So let's get into it. Now, first off, I want to say to you guys that he has done a lot of really good films. He's also a writer, but I wanted to focus mostly on his directorial efforts. And I want you also to know that I like a lot of his films. These are just my particular top five and the ones that inspired me and filled my childhood full of horrific delights. This is just my way of saying thanks and to possibly give you some movies that you may not know that he directed. So let's dive into it. Number five. We got Dolls here. This is a movie that came out in 1987. In fact, this was actually directed and almost finished. They had to do some post-production work before the movie From Beyond came out, and they even shared some of the same sets on. This movie is about a group of several different strangers who get stuck in a storm and happen upon a mansion of a couple an old couple who are doll makers part creepy and part childlike wonder in one movie very few films that can do that one of them that comes to my mind is always christmas evil because it's endearing and it's creepy as fuck plus this is just like downright awesome for people who like little tiny terrors dolls puppet master fans things like that these are the kind of dolls that will freak you the fuck out. In fact, if you didn't know, Stuart Gordon actually was once accidentally locked in a doll museum where he had to stay with all these old dolls that he started to get freaked out by and kept saying that it felt like they were looking at him and he was very much living in this film almost. A lot of the cast is dispatched in weird ways by laughing dolls that sometimes break open and look like some fucking jelly inside. There's like these weird things living inside of these dolls and it gets even wilder as the story progresses. If you're ever a fan of like doll horror or frightened by it, this might actually do the trick. But it's also kind of, like I said, that sweet childlike wonder in this film, which is why it's always been a, a, a memory for me. And I've enjoyed this film quite a bit. This is actually my Hong Kong DVD release because there was a time when this didn't come out on DVD. And this was pretty much the only copy that you could get until, of course, Screen Factory came out and delivered a wonderful print for dolls, which... It's now called The Dolls. Am I wrong here? Because it's dolls. But if you look on IMDb, it says The Dolls. And I'm not sure why that is. If anybody knows that kind of information, let me know. I'd be curious to know in the comments section down below. But I think it's a very memorable film. And it's it's really kind of got some really unique things in it. They have some interesting sequences with uh bear and all kinds of crazy stuff in this i thought Stuart gordon did a really good job on it he didn't write this one uh, but he directed it very well and if you haven't seen it i would highly recommend checking it out stuck now a lot of people don't know that this is a Stuart gordon film it came out in 2007 and it's based on a true story where a 25 year old Texas woman slammed into a homeless man, getting him stuck inside of the windshield from his head to the top of his chest. And instead of contacting an ambulance or calling the police or doing anything right, she drove an additional mile in Texas to her home, parked the car in the garage and let the man die. Sad as fuck. 
it's kind of like a huge story legend in Texas and somebody turned it into a real film. And I mean, who wouldn't want to watch a film about that anyway? This is super tense and it's actually a little bit more of a mainstream effort by Stuart Gordon. And I think it's a really good one. It's dark. It's super funny sometimes. It's like harrowing. You don't know who you're rooting for almost in this fucking film. And I think he did an incredible job on this film. And I don't think it gets nearly the kind of support that it should get, especially it being a Stuart Gordon film. If you've not checked this out, you are missing out. I highly recommend either renting it, finding it on some streaming service like Prime or something like that. I don't know where it's up as of right now, but I would highly recommend you checking this out. Have you guys seen this? Do you recommend it? Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comments down below. Number three. Fortress. That's right. A sci-fi action gore B-movie film that was put out in 1992, directed by Stuart Gordon, and this movie kicks fucking ass. Some people have even said that this movie is better than Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Recall, and I think in some ways they're actually kind of right. So what is this movie about? It's about a futuristic prison called The Fortress, where people and inmates are put in prison to be monitored daily, all day long. Hell, when they go to sleep and they have a good dream, they will hack into these people's minds and say it's an unauthorized access. This is an unauthorized thought process. Part of the reason why the main character, John Brennan, gets put into this fortress prison is because him and his wife are trying to have a baby and they're trying to slip through some sort of checkpoint. This is, of course, in the future and when i say the future i mean the recent past because on the cover it's in the year 2017 it's futuristic anyway so it doesn't really matter when it takes place but it's kind of interesting to see movies that only went to like 2017 and did consider that people would be watching this in the future but it is a great b movie with plenty of gore lots of sci-fi goodies you've got Christopher Lambert, who plays the role of John Brennan. And the funny thing is, some people have actually called this movie better than Total Recall. And I actually kind of agree with them in some regards. It's not perfect, but it's got so much interesting stuff in it. And the other funny thing is, is that Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to be the leading role in this movie. Christopher Lambert took it over because Arnold Schwarzenegger was working on another movie at the time called Last Action Hero, which I like. Come at me, bro. So touchy. So in a way, we pretty much got Two great films, in my opinion. You got Kurtwood Smith, who was in RoboCop and that 70s show as Red. You got Tom Towles, who's also been in Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, and Tom Savini's 1990 version of Night of the Living Dead. And Jeffrey Combs. What's not to like about that? He's no stranger to Stuart, that's for sure. But if you've never seen this movie, honestly, I highly recommend it. It is one of the better 90s sci-fi action gore B-movie films that you will see. It's got cybernetic people, exploding body parts, lots of gore in this film. It's a lot of fun to watch. They even made a sequel for this film. It was so good. But let's be honest, this is the best one. Thanks, Stuart. Number two. Reanimator. Now, I know, I know some of you are freaking out right now, probably clenching your fists, ready to punch the screen or digging your nails into your hand until it bleeds, because this would be a lot of people's number one film. And it is by far, in my opinion, one of Stuart Gordon's best and most popular films that he's ever done. Which is interesting because of all the articles I've been reading about Stuart Gordon's passing, a lot of them have failed to mention this movie. And why the hell would you forget Reanimator when it is one of the most classic retelling of H.P. Lovecraft's story called Herbert West, The Reanimator, that you can find? It's one of the many few stories that you can find out there that are really good. Just a classic. I mean, the story is about a scientist who is much like Frankenstein and trying to bring people back to life. 
and he has this special green serum, which is iconic as fuck. Jeffrey Combs is obviously the scientist, and he does a very good job of being a dark sociopath who is willing to do anything to prove that his serum works and to get it to work properly. Sometimes you wonder if he's doing it only because he's a narcissist. Other times he tries to make everyone think it's for humanity. And so he brings in other people and this story gets pretty bloody. I mean, they spent 46, I think 50 gallons of blood on this movie, which is insane if you think about it. There's a lot of really great gore, a lot of funny scenes, a lot of really great stuff in this film, and I absolutely love it. And I'll explain when I get to my number one why this one is only number two for me. It's Jeffrey Combs, probably arguably one of his best roles that he's ever done. So if you've not seen this film, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Get on it. Plus, every time I watch this film, I always want to go down the reanimator hole and watch the other sequels like Bride of the Reanimator and Beyond Reanimator, which some people don't like, but I am fine with it. Both of those sequels were directed by Stuart Gordon's friend, Brian Usna. If you like this, you should definitely check out those next. And now for number one. And last, but definitely not least, one of my favorite Stuart Gordon films of all time. Keep in mind, this is my particular list, so yours may vary. From Beyond. This is awesome. I am a huge sucker for these kind of movies. Not only is it practical effects, phonerific, it is just a wild story. You got Jeffrey Combs, who is playing the assistant to Dr. Pretorius. It is based off the H.P. Lovecraft story of the same name called From Beyond about a machine that can break through into another dimension where creatures and things lurk beyond, from beyond. And when this machine is turned on, it's like tuning forks that are sticking up that basically punch a hole into another dimension. When they open this up, it kills the doctor. Now, some of you may know that the story from H.P. Lovecraft is essentially the beginning of this movie. It is not this entire movie, so this movie was helped written by Stuart Gordon. But when things go wrong, they get a hell of a lot worse, and Jeffrey Combs' character tries to restart the program to make sure that he can get it to work and fix it because they throw him in a crazy bin and think that they can redo this whole thing again. And it gets wilder and wilder. There's some of the most creative shit I've ever seen in this film. It is one of the top three films that I would say that are H.P. Lovecraft stories as well as... H.P. Lovecraft-ish inspired films. Those films are like In the Mouth of Madness by John Carpenter, which isn't an H.P. Lovecraft story, but my God, for the longest time, it was one of the closest interpretations I'd seen, as well as Stuart Gordon's work on both the reanimator and this, but also now Color Out of Space. But this is the original cover that I saw on the VHS rental stores that said, humans are such easy prey. And look at that cover. Like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> this guy's face is melted. And some of the creatures that you see in this film are fucking fantastic. Just look at this guy. <laughs> Humans are such easy prey. I have always been a fan of movies where they go beyond anything. Hell, the name of this podcast is Beyond the Void. So you can kind of get an idea why I would enjoy movies like this from beyond. That's pretty neat. <laughs> and I'm a huge H.P. Lovecraft nut, but this is one of the best adaptations or interpretations of Lovecraft, and it is a gore feast for you gore hounds out there. I think this one beats Reanimator because of my personal interests in horror. Kind of feels like it was made for me, you know? Like I could have paid someone millions of dollars to make this movie because this is what I enjoy. Stuart Gordon, you did an amazing job. Thank you for creating so many wonderful movies, but this one in particular is one of my all-time favorites. Check it out. So that's it, guys. You know, it's it's been a sad couple of weeks and this news doesn't add to anything, but I figure we can celebrate the many decades 
of horror and genre films that Stuart Gordon put his talent on, you know, celebrate the man's life because he was a huge impact on a lot of people's lives. And I, for one, can't wait to watch these again after talking about it now. I am all about it. Maybe your list might be a little bit different than mine. And obviously some of his other films would fill the, uh, maybe the six to 10 slot. What would your top five Stuart Gordon directed films be? Let me know in the comment section down below and if you haven't already please like and subscribe if you like me doing these sort of top five films or top films let me know in the comment section down below i'll be glad to do some more of these in the future i really enjoyed researching and doing all this stuff so thanks for coming by and as always long live the void